So how many taxes have you gotten? Oh, it wasn't. It wasn't bad. Yeah, it wasn't bad. This last year, um, you no, know, somewhere around three hundred total. Um, this year is only about a hundred. So. You just not popular. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I I don't know if this crew like really like what happened is that they the convocation ended and a bunch of kids started leaving oh. and so probably about half of them stayed. I got a lot of FaceTime calls, but people didn't believe. That it was my number, so when I answer it, then you get the ah, and that, so that, that's always funny. I love it because my wife is always she's next to me, and she she just cracks up. So that's the truth. <laughs> Everyone wants to start. Is there a way you would summarize the trip to the Middle East and in two minutes or however you could do that? <laughs> oh man, it, it'd be hard to like put into to condense the thing. I first have to thank uh, Athletes for Israel, Daniel Posner, for um, putting this thing together and helping us, and then CSM, Lee Miller. I mean, those two, like, really stepped up to the table, and um, they had a mission of what they wanted to accomplish, which was to show unity um, through athletics. And, uh, I mean, we saw it in action in Israel, and then being us in Arizona, being the first two college teams to ever travel from Israel to an Arab country, uh, going to Abu Dhabi. I mean, we made history, and it was just a great time. Um, our host, Jason Fine, was incredible. He was with us the whole time and made sure that everything went smooth, and even up to the, you know, the airport when there was some ticket issues. And um, uh, I mean, Jason was unbelievable. Uh, Bailey, uh, my director of operations, she was a champ and putting this whole thing together, keeping everything running. And I don't know, I don't know could have went better. We had a little flight issues, but other than that, um, everything else was just wonderful. And um, on the trip with us was Dr. McAfee and Kim. And uh, they we're just so thankful that they took time out of their schedule to come spend their time with us, made sure our athletes were taken care of. And then uh, Marty Vernier came on the trip and she was just, just terrific. I mean, you learn so much about her love and passion and her family's passion for Kansas State. And I mean, it just meant meant so much to us. And uh, uh, Coach Clark and Julie came along to help chaperone that. And uh, I had a blast with Coach Clark. And I've got some some video that uh, so that I, um, I'm i gonna save it for the right time to release Coach Clark really um, getting it in with a belly dancer. Uh, but uh, <laughs> but my father-in-law's in it too. So I got, <laughs> I got, I got cr incriminating evidence on both of them. <laughs> now both of their wives were right there. So it was just, we had a wonderful time. I mean, everyone, uh, we had three goals on this trip. Number one was for all of our players to go and have a great time and want to come back to school, okay? And uh, with the day and age of the transfer portal, uh, you know, I mean, uh, it was very important that every young man saw that they had a role uh, in our team and they were going to be uh, a major contributor to what we were doing, not just for this year, but moving forward. And so goal number one was accomplished. Number two was that we represented K-State on and off the court in a way that, uh, I mean, at the highest level of character and integrity. And basically what we wanted, my goal was that, that we wanted them to invite us back. And I'll just one example is on our trip over, uh, when the flight attendants came over, it's a 12 hour flight from Atlanta <clears throat> to, uh, what were we flying to, Tel Aviv. And one of the flight attendants came over a few hours into the trip and just said, coach, your, your young men are just so respectful and so engaging, you know, so polite. And you know, those are the things that really mean so much to you as a coach when your guys really, their, their true character comes out. I'm not around them the whole time and their true character comes out and so uh, and then the third goal was that for our staff because um, people ask how has summer been and I don't know that we've had a summer you know we've been recruiting all the way through and just everything I, I wanted our staff and wives to be able to have some fun and to relax and have a good time together and so I thought all three goals were accomplished and I was very pleased with that. Is there maybe an anecdote that symbolizes what you guys learned or the experiences that you guys experienced? Um, I hope our guys learn that uh, basketball can take them a lot of places in life and, uh, and that they really appreciated what they experienced. Um, I think it'll be a while for them to understand just how special what they were able to accomplish really was. Um, understand that, that sports you know, can really bring people together. And they were able to see um, 
I mean, we traveled, we went from Israel into Palestine to visit Bethlehem and then uh, came back and uh, Israelis aren't allowed to cross that border and Palestinians aren't allowed to cross back and that was so special to do. And had a meal at um, Kamal's house in Palestine and uh, he's a Palestinian Arab Christian and his mom shared her story about being in Germany and then traveling back uh, to Palestine to get married and you know, arranged marriages, which my daughter didn't like to hear. Um, <laughs> but, I mean, just the whole time, I mean, meal at their home, they fed all of us. It was just, I mean, all the meals were just unbelievable. I think I told y'all, somebody had asked me what I was most looking forward to, and I said the food, and the food blew everything away. It was the time we got to share around the table and, and understanding when we talk about breaking bread here, you know, um, there you actually break bread with your hand and dip into the bowl and pass things around and to watch the guys have that kind of community and team building, you, you can't like, I, I can't fabricate that or, or put something together to, to get them to have that kind of experience. And so it, it was it was spectacular. What, what did you find to be most impressive of your guys on the court? On the court? Ooh, we're, well, I, I've, I've always felt like we're pretty fast and uh, I, I feel like we could be the fastest team in the country and by our speed, our ability to get up and down the court, each individual person a little bit quicker. At, I think we'll be quicker at most positions uh, than most of the teams we play against. So, um, our, so I'll start with our freshmen. Uh, Day Day's probably had the best um, off season of the three freshmen. He's just like really showed, he's got some toughness to him. He's really competitive in the weight room on the court. You know, just has to want that. He he probably didn't play as well as he wanted to play, and, and, and that's okay. Uh, RJ and Buddy both, you know, came in out of shape, and uh, we had to get them into some kind of shape so that they can compete. But when the lights came on, they both had really special moments at times, but they also were freshmen, so they had their up and downs. And so, you know, we saw the reason why they're here and why they're going to help us be a real good program moving forward. Um, for the you know, the red shirt guys, I thought uh, Jarrell, you know, got better every game, ending the last one with a double-double. And, and you wanted to see that. You want to see his confidence grow. And, um, you know, Dorian, uh, he hadn't gotten a groove yet. and But, you know, he just does some things that, uh, you know, he lets you know he's got a chance, you know, and he's going to gonna be all right. And Taj, when he plays with energy, he, I mean, he was, he was really good and, and consistent, you know, with what he did. Uh, those, those the four you know older guys you know with um, TP and uh, Quan Arthur and Cam I mean I think as a staff we walked away and said all right we got you know four dudes there that um, we can count on every night so how far has Naquan's game come in the last compared to a year ago now um, you know I, I, he's more confident right he knows he can do more things. Um, uh, he's he's really we just really want him to embrace the fact that his energy level his speed his quickness um, he can he can dominate a game on both ends of the floor and there was a spurt there against Mexico where he took the game over and had a couple dunks a couple of nice drives because he was in the passing lane and you know um, and so uh, that that was good to see we just want to see that more consistent and, and it'll come. Both, uh, both Arthur and Tyler had one really big game of peace out there. How, how good of that? How good was that to see them do that as transfers? Yeah, uh, Arthur, that, that first game, man, was really locked in. And um, the second game, he got in foul trouble. And what's crazy is I told him he was a magician because at the end of the third quarter against Mexico, he had four fouls and he was sitting on the bench. And at the end of the game, he only had three fouls. Yeah, and Quan, <laughs> Quan had three fouls, and in the fourth quarter he got five fouls, and we were like, how did that happen? So we had Arthur sitting on the bench with three, was supposedly thinking he had four fouls when he only had three, supposedly, and Quan on the floor, you know, and so that foul thing kind of messed some stuff up. So that second game kind of, kind of so, messed. So that's up. why he fouled out with five minutes to go. Yes. Okay. Yes. <laughs> that that that's what happened, and so. Um, you know, it's crazy because kids will go back and look at the score sheet and say, man, coaching them said I had 
four files and I only had three files. And so we was able to show him the score sheet. And I mean, it's just the information they gave us, you know. And so, But, you know, uh, it was good. And I mean, Arthur's a good player. He's a good player. And, and our goal, our, our, our responsibility and his responsibility is to get him to where he's consistent every night. And, uh, and I think we'll be able to get him there. And TP's, I, I wasn't fabricating, nor I wasn't, it wasn't hyperbole when I said he's the best shooter in the country. He is. He's just, he was just not used to having the freedom. And, and once again, it's not a knock on anything. He, the style of play that allowed them to win was different at North Texas than the style we want to play that's going to allow us to win. And it's just going to take him some time to feel comfortable taking some shots that he hadn't been allowed to take. And uh, But I think he got pretty comfortable there that last game, 18 minutes, got up 11 threes and made nine of them. And so, uh, you know, exciting to see that. And Cam was just solid all the way through, man. He's he's really taken a big stride. And uh, with all of them, he just – uh, what we have to come to now when the season starts is get to where uh, missed shots don't affect their confidence, and uh, that's going to come from work. On the other side, was there, were there, was there anything that maybe was exposed a little bit or things that you now know that you need to, to work on going into the season? Well, we knew rebounding was going to be an issue and uh, was an issue and why we lost the last game last year, and so we're, we're working on correcting that and we'll continue to do that. Um, not having David there. Obviously, plays an impact, and so. But David did a great job with his Netherlands team. Um, I knew that, like most of the teams we played, they're used to being iced on the side, and uh, you know they're used to the, so they know how to attack it, and so there was a lot of pressure put on our closeouts on the backside, and and I felt like we did a good job of that. Um, the guys, you know, when they make shots because they get paid to do it, you know, they just make shots. The question was, did our guys see it? Did they scramble? And so uh, we saw some stuff that we're going to have to continue to get better at, but we, I thought uh, for the most part I saw our guys fly around and, and look pretty good. Good, and another guard in Quiz Glover. Coach Pope had some comments about NIL perhaps driving him away from BYU. Did you see that the same way? Um, well, I'm, I'm really glad you asked me that question. And uh, first of all, Quez Glover, is a terrific basketball player. Played at Florida for two years at Sanford. Uh, most of the coaches in that league thought he was right there for player of the year. His senior year, he played hurt early, and then when he came back at the end, averaged almost 20 the last 10 games of the season. He's, he's a competitor. Uh, he can get downhill. He can get by. He can make tough shots. Uh, he's a you know two to one assist to turnover guy, and and so we're excited for his leadership and his ability on the floor, off the court. He's a terrific human being. I mean, y'all are gonna love him. A great smile, very engaging, great eye contact. Uh, I mean, I, I'm excited. Both him and TP are gonna be terrific. Uh, I I believe Coach Pope was sending more of a message to his alumni about the the NIL thing than he was speaking on behalf of who Quez Glover is. But to correct this thing, it's his his family and him decided to leave because of a lack of trust, not a, not a lack of NIL, right? And these guys, um, these young men are promised things going in, and when they get there, when it's not delivered or they don't see the ability, if, it's, if there's a, there's a lack of trust in one area, it spreads to all areas, okay? And so it, it wasn't an NIL movement. It was a trust movement, and uh, he just didn't feel like they could do what they said they were going to do, and uh, I think Coach Pope uh, would be willing to agree to that also. Is there a component of international play that can be impactful for you guys moving forward? Yeah, they're, they're cutting off the ball. Um, uh, there's, there's a lot of movement body movement, ball movement, um, which makes it really hard to guard. And so there were some aspects of that. Playing with a 24-second shot clock and a reset at 14, you know, just the faster pace, more possessions. And I'm a, I'm a more possession guy. So, yeah, that aspect really fits into to what we want to do. And so uh, that whole thing made, made it really good for us. First day of class, what do you want to see from the guys now? Well, we're, this next two weeks, we're giving them off of basketball from us. Okay. Um, we're going to they'll have a couple of days of movement and recovery and stuff with Luke and Phil. Um, they're, they're putting that plan together. And then uh, next week, it'll be you know three days of weightlifting and 
uh, some shooting and stuff with our, our GAs, and then we'll come back and start the basketball process back, get their bodies into some semblance of shape, because two weeks after that, we'll do our shark week, and then we'll start practice. And so there's a buildup that has to take place. Uh, you know, I, I want the guys to be excited about being in the gym and, you know, happy to be back, enjoy uh, being a, a college student for a little while. Um, I think most of them probably try to go home this weekend and, uh, you know, see their families because we've been gone for a while. But uh, try not to, I mean, we got to figure out how to let them rest with the work we've just put in also. Is yeah. your staff just keeping an eye on the portal with that one open spot left? Yeah, we're, we're seeing what's going on. I mean, um, whether there's movement taking place, we're looking at overseas guys. You know, um, a lot of these guys who have played uh, professionally but only received room and board, you know, are, the NCAA is considering them amateurs. And so we're checking into all of that. Did you catch any of what Dave did for the lens <coughs> while you guys were overseas? Excuse me. Yeah, we, we were able to see him. And, uh, I mean, he... Well, he had, you know, two really good games and then one game where when you come off a big game, then you get put at the top of the scouting report. And so, you know, I don't, he did, you know, he had to adjust to that. But, you know, his rebounding was good. He, he shot the ball well and his movement, you know, I mean, he showed he could dribble handoff. He could, you know, do some things. And so it's making us look at some other things to do with him. Excuse me. <coughs> What's your guys' timeline? Yeah, we're not even talking about that right now. Right now, it's uh, you know, we, you know, we want to figure out. I mean, you know, we'll start off probably playing ten, and, you know, and then shrink it down a little bit from there. And you got to figure out who the ten are going to be. And um, we never choose red shirts; they they choose, you know. And um, we'll, we'll see how that goes. Did Dorian get a red shirt last year? You mentioned him. Uh, it, it's it's in the process of being worked on, so. We'll see what happens there. With with Glover, what was the final um, recruiting um, push on that? With you being overseas, did you just do a lot of Zoom calls, or how did that work out? Uh, yeah. Well, I think he did his research, being a teammate with Keontae Johnson, right. you know, and his mom, his family, being able to talk to Keontae's family, you know, and just find out, you know, more about us and who we are. I think that probably. Uh, pushed it over the top. Then all of our guys reached out to him, and uh, so I know that went a long way with him and his family. Had you been involved with him before uh, BYU? Uh, a little bit. A little bit. Watching a little bit before that. Mm. Thinking in particular of, of uh, Arthur Coloma, but what are the individual sessions you have for players <coughs> to lay out the, the parameters of how they play and where they played previously and how that will affect what they do at Kansas State? Yeah, um, you know, we know, like, guys like Arthur and Quan, they can do a lot, you know, and so to to limit or to put them in a box, like, hey, this is what you can do and so this is what we need you to do, um, I, you know, I, I'm going to give them the opportunity between now and probably, you know, halfway into the season to to determine like what they can and can't do and how it's going to best affect help us winning going forward because the goal is not to peak at the beginning or to be at our best at the beginning but you know to to get there in March February and March and so that's um, so right now they're allowed to do anything that they think they can do and that we work on in practice and then we'll figure out how to help them do it the most efficient way were there any revelations in terms of personalities or what players can do on the basketball floor during the trip? Uh, more personalities, more personalities. TP's a, a run to the battle guy um, in several instances. You know, there was some different things we were in where he volunteered. This is non-basketball stuff. He volunteered to be the person, you know, he was the, you know, one of the first ones up with the the belly dancers and Day Day was right there with him and you know like you see their personalities who's the ones that at the front and who's the ones that kind of like right behind that and who's the ones that stay behind and see what's going on before they get involved so we were able to, to learn a lot about their personalities that way. Curious if you 
say you gave out your phone number last year at Convocation too? Yeah. Did you have any students take you up on that, call you, Coach, I need a ride at home or something like that? Uh, I've had um, parents reach out for their kids who are struggling and asked if I would just check on them. I've had uh, kids, young man yesterday uh, needed some gas, and so I met him at the gas station, and put some gas in his car, and, um, you know, yeah, I've had kids, but I've also had them uh, say, Coach, we got this going on, if you can stop by, and it's been so helpful for me to get to know about the college life and what's going on, and, you know, for me to stop in for five minutes and say hi, it means the world to them, and and I learned so much. So yeah, it's been a, a lot of, we, we, I, I've been as rewarded in this as anything else. Why is that so important to you? I mean, most coaches probably aren't stopping by like the, the Brad houses, right? I, I got two kids on campus, and I hope that uh, a professor, someone else on campus will uh, take an interest, see if they're having a good or a bad day, and be willing to you know, put their arms around them or just, just talk to them and understand that they're, they're people, they're, people away from home probably for the first time and um, you know and they just need to know that somebody there cares about them so what kind of led to you wanting to do that in the first place last year uh, Matt Driscoll at uh, North Florida uh, he told me he gave out his number when uh, he's been there for 15 years and he told me like his second year there it might have been he gave his number out and uh, just the response he got. And I thought he was crazy. I was like, Coach, you got 3,000 freshmen? And and he says the best thing that he ever did. And so I was very thankful he shared that with me. Do you have any coaching friends who have called you crazy for doing it? Oh, yeah. The reports are the season ticket sales are kind of through the roof. I know you're probably getting feedback on that. How excited are you to hear about that? Man, that, that, that is great, right? But check this out. We have never sold out every game for a season. In the history of Kansas State, never sold out every game. Like, so I know that our student section is going to be rocking every night. Our students have answered the bell. They've bought the, the passes and done all those things. They're going to be there. So this is, I want to challenge our alumni, right, to show up, right? Like, can we have a season? I think the most we've ever had was 15 sellouts, and that was 2010. Frank Martin, the team went to the Elite Eight. Can we beat that? Can we, I mean, you know, the, the school up the road sells out every game, right? And we say we want to beat them, right? That's what, my, that's what the fans told me. We want to beat them. Well, I want to beat them. Let's, let's, uh, let, let's, let's sell out this stadium every night. Let's don't just buy the tickets, right? Show up. Come to the games. Make it a priority. Get here. Let's sell out every game that we have here in Bramlage and come cheer because not for who. Don't, don't come to the game because who we're playing against. Come to the game because we are playing. And so that, that's, our, that's my challenge to the fans, right? Let's, let's sell this thing out every game. And don't let any, don't, don't give any tickets away to, to somebody on the other side. Let it be all purple, and let, let's keep this thing to doom. Eager for the upcoming football season? Sir? Are you eager to watch the Oh, man, I'm fired up. I've been to two practices, and uh, yes, I, I, I'm, I'm very excited about, about football season. Uh, can't wait. Do you wish that you could do like an overseas trip every summer? Or is that what makes it special that you can only do it once every so often? Man, it'd be, I, I think my staff might like not necessarily like that. <laughs> um, I, maybe, maybe not. Uh, I wish we could do it more than once every four years. Like every other year, uh, that, that'd be, because you have some kids who are not in school, but for one or two years. And if they miss, you know, that window, then they never get a chance to do that. And it's such a great team building thing. Now, um, I, I think uh, Gene and Jill may not like the bill on it every uh, <laughs> couple of years, but uh, I'm just telling you, if, uh, I know that everyone that went on this trip would tell you that there, you can't put a price tag on what we gained from it. I was curious, the end of the Mexico game, when things didn't go your way, how did the team respond to that? That seemed to be the only adversity you guys had. Oh, they were great. I mean, you know, we went in the locker room. We told them, hey, you know, we we gave the game away, and it had nothing to do with what happened at the end of the game. You know, we had, like, went on a run, went up, I think it was seven, and then came out of timeout, and they hit a two, and they hit a three on our mess-ups on defense, and then all of a sudden it was a tight ball game again. And so um, things that – they're all things that we could control. And so I, th I thought the guys 
uh, handled it well, shook it off, and came back the next day ready to play. Coach Miskelly, that was your first time with him on the sidelines. How did he do? Oh, he's great. Uh, Franklin is uh, a talent. He's got a really good basketball mind. He's elite at the video stuff and uh, um, excited. Him and McKenzie are a great addition to our program. I got, we got to spend 10 days and get to know their personalities and watch them together. And just, just a, a beautiful couple and we're so blessed to have them. I know before the trip you said it was a bucket list item for you to go there. What was it like getting to share that experience with your coaching staff and the kids who also said they were excited for like religious reasons and stuff? Man, uh, to, I really thought that I would be overwhelmed because of my faith and being where Jesus was. And, and I, I tell you, I was probably more overwhelmed to see, you know, um, the, the conflict, right? Like exactly what the fight was over and that, that it, it did exist. And, uh, but to visit the, the, the Abraham Accord House, and to see where there was a synagogue and a mosque and a Christian church on the same facility and, and watch how they, they focused on their, what is similar about the faith rather than the differences in the faith. That, that was really, really moving. And uh, I mean, sports can bring people together. And um, so, the, the whole thing, I, I, I mean, I just don't have, I wish I was, had better words to describe what we felt, but I know that every guy on our staff and every wife, um, everyone has said it was by far and away the best trip they'd ever taken. And uh, the people in, in Jerusalem were so gracious and wonderful, and Tel Aviv, it was, I mean, that is a, um, that is a terrific city, and just, just a wonderful place, and then Abu Dhabi, um, they have zero crime rate, right? I mean, it's like one of the guys uh, told us, Ali, he said, Coach, I could leave my car unlocked with the keys in it and my wallet on the seat in one spot for a week, parked in a spot for a week, and I guarantee you no one will touch it. He said, there's more likely they will come to my house to check on me and make sure everything's okay and say, hey, I saw your car sitting there, are you all right? Then they, then they would to go in and touch it and the, the, the people and how they embrace their culture and how important it is to them and uh, the respect that they, they show for other people uh, is, uh, that, that was tremendous. It was a blessing to see. Anything else? Did you get to try the watermelon? I did. The watermelon in Jerusalem and Israel was incredible. It was incredible. The food, fellas, like we'd sit down and they bring, like the table was covered with food, right? Like these are the uh, cold appetizers and then the hot appetizers and then the, the, the starches or whatever. And then the main core, like three different, and they all oh, don't fill up. And like, what do you mean don't fill up? Like, <laughs> it was just crazy. And it just kept coming and coming. And every, I was like, they, they can't possibly eat like this every night. But it was, it was incredible. I, I mean, the, the pictures of the food are, are just terrific. So, yeah, it, it was, the food was better than I thought it was. I, and I, I was excited about going to eat the food. I was excited about the watermelon and the, the fruits and stuff. And it, it just blew everything away.